Hi, today I'm going to show you a very special feature that was requested of me recently. And we're talking about an ADF web application. And in the ADF web application, there are forms that the users should be able to personalize. And I will show you right now what I mean by that. And then I will show you how this feature was implemented using ADF. So I'm going to log in to the web application as user Joe. And the web application itself is nothing very spectacular. And the essential part is this form down here. We have first name, last name, and hometown fields. First name, that would be my name, and my current hometown. Well, this form need not look the same to every user. And of course, this is an extremely simple form, but say our user would like to remove the hometown item. And hey, there's also a gender item that's currently not shown, but that could be added to the form. So let's add the gender item, apply the changes, close this manipulation box, and now the form looks like this. There's a first name, a last name, no hometown, and there's a gender, and I happen to be male. And of course, the user can go on and on to make changes. I don't want a first name, I do want a hometown, I want to apply the changes, and there's the form. Now you may wonder, this is all very nice and well, but what if the user goes away, closes the session, and then returns later on as Joe to the form, what, what will have happened to the changes? Well, in this particular case, the changes are still there. These changes were saved to MDS as personalizations and they are persisted across sessions. Now you may wonder, well, that's nice for user Joe, but what if user Joe is not the only user in town and there's also a user, let's say Jane. There we go, there's Jane. She logs into the same ap application and after taking care of this little glitch, Here's the form that user Jane uh, is logging into. And she has first name, last name, hometown. And that's not the collection that Joe has now just before. And of course, Jane also can manipulate her form. She certainly doesn't like gender to be in the form. And she also doesn't like to have a last name. Apply the changes. There's only first name Jane. And there's hometown, wherever she's from. Uh, Maricam or whatever. And also Jane's changes are persisted as personalizations across sessions. So you may wonder where are these changes persisted and in what kind of form? Well this is all kind of the ADF MDS mechanism and in my simple development environment MDS is saving its changes to files in a production environment that would be true database. The document would be exactly the same. The, the changes are persisted in documents that are XML documents and we are now on the file system and in this file system there is a directory and let's start the path over here and the SS cust for customizations and it's the user layer in the customizations and in the user layer there's a directory for Jane and in this directory for Jane there's this single document, the form.jspx. That's the, f um, the file, the, 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 the name of the JSPX um, that defines the form, .xml. And this file contains the personalizations for user Jane for this particular form. And here's the contents of that file. And we can see that the attribute visible is set to true for elements IT1 and IT4 and set to false for elements T2, uh, IT2 and IT3. Well, it won't be a surprise that there's also a directory for user Joe and in user Joe there is a file with the same name and in his file true is set for IT2, 3 and 4 
and false is set for the attribute visible for IT1. So this is where the changes are stored. Now the implementation of this particular form is in JDeveloper. We're looking at JDeveloper right now. For this application, we have specified a number of things. At the view controller project level, we have specified that user customizations are enabled across sessions using MDS. That's the setting right here. That's an important one. We also have enabled application level security. So security is active on this application. In the ADF config file, we have specified a number of things. We specified customization classes, the site customization class that allows us to create customizations at runtime against the entire application for all users. We're not currently using that. And the user CC customization class, which is one shipped by Oracle, which allows us to create personalizations at user level. And then additionally, we have specified that the panel form layout component can be personalized as well as the input text component. And for the input text component, specifically the attributes visible and rendered can be customized. And in this case, we're only using the personalization or customization of the visible attribute. So far, oh, maybe I should show you what the source looks like. Um, here's the source for the customization classes. And down here is the source for the customization of the input text and the panel form layout component. And also there's the persistent change manager that we require in this case. Let's go to the, to the form page itself and we already know it's called the form.jspx. The form itself is defined down here. Four input text elements, first name, last name, gender, hometown, IT2, IT, IT1, IT2, IT3, IT4. And gender initially is not visible. So without any customizations, gender won't be showing on, uh, on the page at runtime, but we have clearly seen that we can make gender visible at runtime. So we can both turn existing visible items to invisible and invisible ones to visible. Now, the panel form layout has a binding to a bean, the form manipulator bean, uh, more specifically its form property. And we'll see later on how that works out. The panel box with the uh, shuttle where we can manipulate uh, which items should be shown and which shouldn't is over here. It's the select many shuttle component and it takes its value also from the form manipulator bean and also the items that are in the shuttle. So the form manipulator dot components property returns a list of all components that are somewhere in the shuttle, either on the selected side or on the to be selected side. And the list that's currently selected is returned by the, the displayed property in the form manipulator. So let's finally take a look at the form manipulator bean. Here we see get form and set form where the reference to the, for, uh, the rich panel form layout UI component is stored and held. Then here we have the get components that returns uh, simply a list um, of select items for all the items that are children in the form. And it returns for each item the label property as well as the component itself. Here's the list uh, returned by get displayed. That's the list of currently selected items in the shuttle. And that's also the list of components that's currently visible. And you can see how we loop over all the children in the rich panel form layout. And each child that has the visible attribute set, it's, it's a Boolean, um, that's added to this list. So that's how the shuttle knows which elements to display. When we have made changes at the shuttle and we apply these changes, 
uh, we info set displayed and for each form item each input text uh, component that's set to displayed we explicitly make an attribute change that sets displayed uh, that sets the visible attribute to true then here's the logic to find out which uh, of the form items are not displayed uh, they are in the list of, comp uh, of, of form children they are not in the list of visible children so at this point the list out contains all the form items that are not visible and for each of these we explicitly invoke uh, this attribute change method to set the visible attribute to false and then finally the real magic happens here in the add attribute change method um, here we use the change manager that will write our change to mds we tell the change manager what kind of change we are looking at. It's an attribute component change uh, for uh, the attribute whose name is uh, provided here and the value that's provided here. And finally, we save the component change to the change manager. And then we also ask the change manager to immediately apply that change to the component UIC over here corresponds to the form component and this is how the input text components are made invisible right away after the ma manipulation done in the shuttle so i hope you can appreciate the um, the power of the mds um, framework and the uh, change management framework that allows us to create and persist changes at runtime associated with specific user context